Hello, welcome to the Donahue Group. Glad you could join us for this wonderful half hour of conversation. Political intelligence and profound thought on the part of our panelists. We're going to start with other the guy in black coming. here. Yeah, it's okay, man. <laughs> yeah, we have other panelists. Yes, panelists today. Excellent. Jimmy Hoffa is behind Tom Podesky's chair, and so he's going to pop out at some point. Ken Risto, director of the social studies world at the Sheboygan Area School District. I just got a pay increase. Hey, Tom, Tom. Tom Pineski, math professor at UW Sheboygan. Cal Potter, former state senator, as we introduced him in, in those tender 1980 years. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. Glad you could join us. We're talking about state issues, and we've got a lot to talk about. Um, why don't we even just start with the state of the state address? Governor Doyle was on TV for 51 minutes, I believe, was, was the length of the speech. Um, things are, don't look that good, I think is a fair statement from an economic perspective. Um, well, I don't think we can say it. Wisconsin's a basket case, but I think Wisconsin is reflecting what's happening in this country. Um, Congress is ready to pass a major rebate uh, system for people getting on what six hundred dollars average or something that return too bad Lee Sherman Dreyfus has died recently he could give them some <laughs> advice, advice about yes, the how to do it yes right how to, how to get the checks out quickly yeah. but uh, the nation and in this today's paper that I read uh, the, one of the biggest downturns in many decades in uh, new housing construction so the economy is slowing very very rapidly and I think the governor is saying that uh, if things continue, we will have a 300 to 400 million dollar deficit at the end of the budget period, and that we need to now put a hiring freeze on, as well as stop out-of-state travel and many things that are controllable uh, now to be preemptive, so that maybe we don't have that 400 million dollar deficit at the end of the budget period. Yeah. Well, he's proposed a couple of tax credits or tax plans to encourage startup businesses that um, deferring capital gains taxes, if you do X percentage of research and, and development as a part of your business, you get other tax breaks and so forth, causing some rift with the Democrats, interestingly enough, embraced by the Republicans because Republicans they love, are always- They always love tax cuts. Uh, they like tax cuts, um, well, just- Because businesses for, create revenue. Yeah. And that's where, the gov that's where Doyle gets the money. Yeah. Well, and of course, the labor, <laughs> in the business creates the revenue, but in any event. Well, the labor gets, is only needed by the businesses, yeah. right? Th there and we businesses go. Businesses need the labor, well, okay, it's hand in glove. Yeah, that's what Karl Marx said at least. Mm -hmm. I don't know, could be wrong, could be wrong. Well, but I'm, I'm hopeful that the governor. You're comfortable quoting Karl Marx? I like not this. that comfortable, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to Good. say, not that comfortable That's a first at all. for the show. <laughs> well, I'm Karl hopeful that it. this is targeted. Um, there's an interesting uh, article in this week's Newsweek about how, starting with the Reagan era and so on, we cut taxes on investment and capital gains, and the estate tax was cut, and the income tax brackets were cut. And for a period of years, about 80% of the money gained by the wealthy in this country were indeed invested in this country. And what they're seeing now is that there's greater investment uh, in China and in India, and they're saying, is it the policy of this country to continue to give tax breaks to the moneyed without some expectation that they take the gains that they're given and reinvest in this country and not overseas. And, and, I, and think I think the that's governor, what Doyle's plan is. Yeah, and I think so. So, targeted. you know, I think Democrats are, you know, there's a knee-jerk reaction that might be saying, no, we shouldn't do this. But I think there's some expectation that if you and I are going to pay our taxes diligently because we don't have any way of avoiding it, uh, the people who we gift will ought to at least create jobs and create business in this state, and I think that's a, a reasonable exchange. Mm -hmm. I do too. I mean, it, it, it's, it sounded interesting to, to me and where it goes and how it plays out, I don't know, because I think long term Wisconsin, and we can't really, don't have enough time to get into it in any depth in, in the show, but I think long term Wisconsin, just given it's where, it, where it's at and the age of its population and so forth, has some very significant long-term financial issues. You know, as an aside, this is not addressing the issues that are facing us. The, you know, the Republicans held out long past the budget deadline. We want a no tax increase. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no tax, no mm -hmm. budget increase. You know, held out, held out. In, in some cases, they were ridiculed. Uh, and if, and if it were just glided through and we had this big spending package, we'll be in worse shape uh, than we are projected to be in. 
So I would say, uh, in retrospect, uh, kudos to the Republicans for holding out. Uh, we're in bad, we're not in the best shape, but we could have been in a, a lot worse shape if we let those spending bills go through, especially on the health care side. Well, and as we know, so many of those bills as they were proposed were to placate the, the funding sources that were giving money to each side during the, the, the whole budget process. I, I, I guess I would take a little, a little umbrage with your characterization of, of, of that process, but nonetheless, it is it nice can to be have... Interpreted that well, way. this leads into another issue because it's nice to have balanced houses because the mischief, I think, is cut down a little bit if, if, uh, if, not, if one party doesn't control the entire table. Um, interesting proposals coming out of the Assembly and Senate that have no realistic chance of uh, passing. And, for example, the Republicans are proposing to end voter registration on Election Day. Now about 20% of our voters register on Election Day. <clears throat> uh, and this is a proposal that has been pushed in the Assembly that's going nowhere in the Senate. Um, the um, uh, Democrats, on the other hand, uh, in the Senate are pushing for an increase in the minimum wage. That's going nowhere <laughs> in the Assembly, I don't think. Um, so it's interesting to see how any number of bills are getting introduced now. Just, I hate to say for the, for the fun fall of it, election. election. No, it's a fall yeah. election. Fall election. Republicans a have, on a national level and a state level, have used this bugaboo of, of voter fraud. It's a fraud issue. There is no voter fraud. What do they have in Milwaukee, the total of all? couple felons that voted and my, my point, opinion is the person's rehabilitated themselves enough and they're going to go out and vote and they have a felony conviction. God bless them. I'm glad they're rehabilitated. They should be able to vote. But this bugaboo that we need to have all kinds of pictures and ID and do away with voter registration on site is a bunch of baloney. All it is is throwing a bone in the, cor in the corner and having everybody go over there so that we don't have to address health care or education or the environment and all the substantive issues that this government and this society ought to address. The Republican Party who pursues this ought to be ashamed of themselves. This is a, this is a non-issue. There are All right. right. Okay, you got me right Cal, there. Cal, 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 Cal's right. We're going to have to separate there's you been, two. I there's, mean, been a, there's been a pile of well, studies. Well, let's debate tax policy. That's substantive. <laughs> yeah, okay. There have been a pile, a pile and pile of studies that look at this side. whole idea of um, Fake, you know, inappropriate voters coming into the voting place and, and casting ballots with it, and the over all of them speak with one voice. It just isn't a problem. It, no. It's a it's a solution in search of a problem. Um, there are yeah, there are problems with updating voter registration lists and keeping dead people off the rolls and all those sorts of things. But none of these proposals about voter ID are going to solve those types of issues. And the fact of the matter is, most of that isn't a result of fraud anymore than it is the fact that you've got local government officials in small towns trying to deal with unmanageable lists <coughs> changing constantly. And, you know, Wisconsin just doesn't have a voter fraud problem. It, it's, it's just an attempt to try to reduce the turnout of people who want to vote, can't vote. Um, now the Supreme Court's going to weigh in on this. We'll see where they are. Yeah, on the this Supreme topic. Court's going to weigh on it. We'll Whether see. states can actually even begin to require this right. to begin with, it'll be interesting to see where the where the court court comes down. Well, on I it. wouldn't doubt the court's going to say that that it's not, not unreasonable. But why do it if there's not a lot of fraud? Why make yeah. an old person go around searching for place to have a picture taken? They have some type of card in order to. Uh, prove that they can vote. I think you're right. I think the court's going to basically say this is a political issue and sure. let, let, let's have at it in the state legislatures, unlike Florida when they were trying to resolve their electoral problems back in 2000. Yeah, then, I the could court, argue, then the court didn't I, you know, care about that. You've indicated the problems of keeping dead people off the list sure. and keep updating because of migration back, you know, people moving. Mm -hmm. This is a positive way to do that. You go in and get a, a voter ID card and they, and it's a way of, uh, you know, uh, it's a way cleaning of up. really cutting cleaning down. Cleaning up the list. Really cutting down participation oh, even more than we do. <laughs> you know, people could get out. I, I'm, it's, they could have a cousin come over, somebody come over, even a Democrat could come over and take them to the Well, and that's been my proposal because it's pretty clear <laughs> that, that restricting voting access is clearly a way to make sure poor people don't vote. That's and, not, they're not Oh, that's, I mean, it's, compl it's so obvious. But in any event, if in fact it does happen, I think it's incumbent it's on the obvious. Democrats to use it as an organizing tool. Yeah. Because we can't get people, 
we can't get people to vote. People are so distraught with the political system and have so little faith in it. But to, to use it as an organizing tool, I think has some, I mean, yeah. it should, should this ever come Who's about? Who's the alderman in the Milwaukee district that's under fire? McGee? McGee, yeah. Uh, I'll give you five, you know, we got five bucks to go down and vote today. I'm up for a reelection. Yeah. Take him down, they have a driver, five bucks, vote for McGee, you got, you know, have lunch today. No, I'm talking about genuine organizing, saying, you know, poor people, the reason that you don't get anything you want is because you never organize and you don't vote. <laughs> and so when you don't come to the table, you aren't gonna get any of the scraps. And so yeah, just in terms of, of in, sure. yeah, in terms of figuring out, because it clearly is an assault on people who it's, it makes it harder for people to vote, and that's the point of it. I mean, there's no other point because I don't think there really is a problem. I, after the vast amount of resources that went into exploring fraud in 2004, they, they basically they, I mean, they couldn't really have, come up with much. What do you have to have when you go vote? Well, in my, case, in my, in my case, I just walk into my voting poll and they say, oh, you're Beatty and Wayne's son, and, and I don't need to produce any <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. idea. Yeah. So they allow you but, to vote. But the fact Even though is, you live in some other you need, state. You, you're, no, well, you're you cast the list. a provision. I mean, you're, if there's any kind of a question, I mean, first of all, any kind of ID is fine, but, but you so can you turn in. You need an ID, right? No, no, no. no you can turn in. You could just uh, give them a, a telephone bill or any place that shows oh, your I mean, name. You had an ID. That's a telephone bill. Well, it's not an ID in the sense that it doesn't require a photograph or any kind of a card. You, as long as you had a utility bill of any kind, well, you could walk yeah, in, present it, here, this show your bill place of residence, it. and then if there was a question, by the way, you, 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 you actually have a provisional ballot, and then you are checked oh, yeah. out later. And, but, and this then presumes you you can register, anyway. but this presumes you can register on Election Day. Well, I think it's a lot. So. I think it's a lot easier for a, a person with limited means who gets a bill sent to them and use that bill as proof, as opposed to saying you have to go to a government agency, even if it's free. You still need a birth certificate or a social security card or something that people in other walks of life don't necessarily have, and they have to produce, and it costs them to get that thing. And going to the department, the Division of Motor Vehicles, just to wait in line for a ID card will hardly take you more than two or three hours. So, in any uh, event, another myth. <laughs> Depending on, I've know, been actually the voter. Uh, I've been there, and it's actually been really pretty manageable lately. I've been there, and but you still in have and to get there. Out. You still have yeah. to get oh, there. Well, it's not been and manageable with time, my kids, but there we and go. Take, and take part of your day, and and there are lots of folks um, who, in studies, show that if they're forced to spend fifteen dollars on getting a copy of their birth certificate, the local government agency, as opposed to paying their food bills <coughs> or paying the heat bill, they're not going to do it. The history is full of impediments to keep people in their place. And it's the poll taxes, there were literacy tests, and, and if you look at, until the 1960s, black people didn't vote in the South. It was a white-dominated government, and if it wouldn't have been for the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act under the Kennedy-Johnson years, black people still wouldn't be, have the rights that they deserve. And we don't, we shouldn't pick on the poor, we shouldn't pick on black people, we shouldn't pick yeah, on we anybody. We do. We put these doggone hurdles in their way from participating in their own government. And it's, it shouldn't happen. That's not a hurdle. Well, Sorry. Did they put something in the water? That's not a hurdle. He's being, he's being the you water. should. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's the real brought, brought, back all, brought back all the juice. <laughs> that's the real brought back all Cal the Cal Potter's real running for re-election. Re right. <laughs> no, I, I am. He's, he's fit and he's rested. <laughs> I am just so ticked off at these people who come up with these issues that are non-issues. When you've got 47 million people who don't have health insurance, you've got people who are being kicked out of their house, you've got people you know, that have all kinds of needs, and nobody is addressing them. And they're sitting there talking about whether somebody can go to the poll and register. I mean, get a life politician. You know, that's my attitude. Yeah. Well, you know, Joe Leibham had a, you know, all our legislators have their columns in the Beacon and, and so forth. And um, um, the title on Senator Leibham's one was, we don't deserve our pay raise. And you know, I don't agree with Joe very often, but <laughs> I kind of had to agree with him on that. And, and let me just share with you what I find to be remarkable results. And we've talked about polls and people being disillusioned with their state government. This was done by the Wisconsin Policy Research Institute, to, you know, pretty well respected in December. Um, interestingly enough, 
only 12% of those polled believe that voters have the power to determine what the legislature does. 82% thought it's the lobbying groups that, depend, that decide what the legislature does, which I thought was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And the number of Wisconsin residents who consider themselves independents as opposed to Democrats or Republicans has increased dramatically, up to 40%. It's just this huge leap in the last three or four years. And both the Democrats and the Republicans have gone down. And so I think, I, I mean, I do think that we have a little crisis with our legislature and our government as a whole, and it's that cynicism. And I mean, we've talked about this over and over again, the role of money and so forth. But I, I think those are interesting statistics. And I wonder, we just talked briefly about our February 19th primary. You can register at the polls, at least for now. So please, if, <laughs> if you haven't registered and you would like to, all you have to do is bring your library card with you or Utility register utility. beforehand. Any electrical bill, so you your telephone bill. You can walk in and vote. And like you or you could register polls, before, you, you can register beforehand too. But at least for now, it's a pretty easy process. <coughs> I beg your pardon. Um, how will that, and of course, Wisconsin has an open primary. Um, how will how, how will the candidates fare? Let's just do a little prognostication just for the fun of it and to get Cal well, reattached to the planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, at least on the Democratic side, and I don't know the Republican side, because it's an open primary, it's a bit of a beauty contest in the sense that, correct me if I'm wrong, and I could be wrong, but if I recall, because it's open, which means anybody can vote for anybody's candidates across party lines, the delegates aren't being chosen through this primary. Is that... Aren't those settled, settled by caucuses that go on across the various parties? The party parties? picks the delegates, but right. they, they do go by the winner. Well, they do know. Okay. Yes. Okay. Who wins the primary? Is it 100%? Primary? Is it I 100%? think the winners take all. Winners sure. take all, yeah. really. Yeah. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. But who the delegates are is, is right. still by the party. That's why in Nevada, for example, Hillary uh, got less in delegates, even though she was ahead of Obama in the popular vote, because... I think the governor and the congressional delegation and the party state those party chair, yeah. yeah, those super delegates are automatically gone and go. And if they've already committed themselves to Hillary, for example, uh, or, you know, she's got the itch in yeah. that sense. Okay, yeah. but you know, I think it still should, well. Who knows? Because we have to kind of see how the dust settles after the Super Tuesday elections, about a week or so, or ten days earlier, whatever it is. Uh, you might even have candidates already set. I mean, I don't know how that's going to play out, but we are if it's still competitive, I, I think it'll be competitive both on the Republican side and the Democratic side. You're not going to see the mischief that sometimes goes on when, when people can cross party lines because your vote's going to matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the 40% of the Wisconsinites actually vote um, because so far yeah. in the primaries, independents have gone over and voted for, on the Democratic side. Uh, for Democratic candidates more than Republicans. And uh, in, an interesting split. Uh, Governor Doyle is um, yeah. supporting Obama, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Lawton is uh, supporting Senator Clinton. And Feingold, is he supporting anybody? No, typically, um, there was a long article in the Senate, or in the um, mm -hmm. Journal Sentinel this Sunday about uh, typically most senators are going to keep their dog out of the fight until, until things have settled down because it it just gets embarrassing. Yeah, you got two senators running against each other right. on the Democratic it's side, and some of them, are, uh, like Kerry, and some people have come out early and endorsed. And imagine there's probably friendships, and who knows what, whose yeah. ox has been gored, and why they pick who. Yeah. I'll just be. I mean, Obama, as I understand, I mean, we've seen no political activity here. I haven't. I don't know uh, presidential, any no. local presidential work, but Obama has Truly. been in Wisconsin at least. Clinton has not at all. Um, it's John just way Edwards? too early. Yeah, and, it's just way too early. Yeah. I mean, you look at the number of, of primaries that are going to take place on Super Tuesday and the resources you have yeah. to bring to bear on that fight, you don't have time for Wisconsin. When After that, the dust settles and you see where your candidates, where your delegate count is, then you strategically start looking at where you're going to put your money the next, right. you know, next set, if, there is, if it's relevant. Any prognostications? As I think Hillary has still got the front running uh, mm -hmm. status, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere like it was, you know, six months ago when everybody said, well, Hillary's going to run away with this yeah. thing. I think Obama's going to win some primaries, and I think Hillary's going to win some, and okay, so it's we have going to come down to uh, being uh, 
closer than people thought. I think she still has the edge uh, because he's still rather unknown. Uh, he's young. Um, I think you know the Clintons have been in the political limelight for Ever. quite a few years. Right. Yeah. All right. So you you think Clinton narrow? What do you think? Oh. I mean, I, if I voted the Democratic, I know you're not going to vote for a Democrat. If I Tom. voted in the Democratic primary, I'd vote for Obama. So if I voted in the Republican primary, I'll probably I don't know I want to vote for Giuliani. So, but I don't know where he's going to be after Florida. So, Roadkill. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. All right. I mean, so, I really thought, I mean, pundit, for what I mean, uh, okay, so I'm not, you know, as a pundit, this is ridiculous. I think. Yeah. You know, I'm just pick, asking. Yeah, you know, uh, pick the two front runners. All right, so we have one That's Clinton, one Obama. Ken? Are you asking me... Who's going to win? Who's going to win at Not the end? Not who you're going to vote for. In Wisconsin mm -hmm. or at the end? In Wisconsin. On oh, Wisconsin, I February think... February 19th. I think, you'll ha oh, I think you'll have Clinton on the Democratic side, and I think you'll have uh, McCain on the Republican side. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Yeah, I think McCain is so got, got the edge. So th we've got three on Clintons and one side. Obama. Right, so, and those, those are going to be your November picks right away. Do you okay. want my picks for November? <laughs> yeah. You should have a pool. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought that McCain would make this comeback? I mean, it's just you're never out until you're really out. Well, I think the other two have poisoned their own situation. Huckabee has become so religious, I mean, wanting constitutional amendments and some, certain items. You know, most people don't want to wear their religion in their sleeve, and they don't want the president to do that either. Uh, they have their religion, but they don't want the president being the preacher in the White House. Right. And I think he's, I think he's being perceived that way. He's got the 33 million evangelicals maybe panting because he's their, he's their boy. But I think the general populace, he's not the person. And I think Romney has jumped all over the, every issue he's been on both sides. <laughs> and I think people are simp simply saying, is this guy a good-looking uh, movie star type? And I think McCain is the guy who's, even though he, he maybe, always was a straight talker. Yeah, he's a straight talker. He's a straight shooter. He's a veteran. He's supporting the war. He's at least rock solid. You may not agree with him, but they, people are perceiving him as somewhat of a, a, a good guy to go with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> I beg your pardon. So we've got McCain winning in the Wisconsin primary. Not who you're voting for, just who you think is going to win. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All We're right. We're all looking well. at a Republican friend over here. <laughs> I'll, I was pick, gonna, I'll pick Romney. All right. You'll win the Republican. I, I just, because I was, I was going to suggest right. that the loser, you know, buy drinks after the taping. That's fine. So. <laughs> that's nice drinks. Come that's on, I'm going to A little Irish whiskey. <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't know the, the, real, the real makeup of the Republican Party in Wisconsin. I mean, I I'm, I'm think that Romney would appeal to the, the business side of the Republican Party, the business wing, the fiscal side, if you will. I just don't know if uh, the evangelical Christian uh, conservative base of the Wisconsin party is really to push a lever for a Mormon. What about, uh, I mean, Doyle yeah. endorses Obama. That's like I'm pretty surprised. Anyway. I was pretty surprised. You got the Milwaukee area. Are they yeah. going to vote for Obama? Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, Doyle the, jumped the right Madison after Madison group, though. all those young uh, yeah. liberal Oh, I think it's going to be real close. Uh, thinkers, yeah. they're going to vote for Obama. Yeah. Where is Clinton come in? She should fall on her face. Yeah, yeah. But if you think know. about that, if you think where the Democratic votes come from, Madison is huge Democrat, and they got a lot of school, yeah. young school kids there. Yeah, Milwaukee? I think, I think you're right, Tom, <laughs> that it, I think it's going to be really close in Wisconsin, and, she, and, and Clinton could very well, Senator Clinton could very well uh, not win that primary, depending on what's going, you know, depending on the, the bounce and the buzz and everything else I that know, comes out of there. Yeah. It's really right. kind of a it's hard to dark say. thing. And I know in, in talking to some young, you know, some of my former students who are politically active uh, on the Democratic side, they just can't stomach her. They just can't. And they're working really hard for Obama, so I think it'll be a real interesting issue later on when you get to convention time. Yeah. Whoever, you know, that they, how they, those, you do the obligatory stand there together as a united party, you know, at the end of the convention, how those two are going to stand on a stage together. Yeah. Uh, whether it works either yeah. way. They'd be a dynamic tool. Yeah. A duel, really. Well, but yeah, but see, they're, they're, I think there again, you know, how does Clinton make the case that he could be vice president? 
I mean, she's been pounding him up about oh, his lack of experience. I mean, so he's not, he's so a heartbeat away from the president. Yeah. <laughs> he's no, a heartbeat I'm, away from the presidency. Yeah. Well, well, how do you, I mean, you know, that kind of thing always goes on. And they always sure. kiss and make up. And they always come out, not always, but more yeah. often than not, come out as a united front. But if you're a and Republican, you start running the tapes of, of Senator Clinton saying this guy is not ready to sit in the Oval Office the first day. Well, what happens when something think, happens to you? I mean, I mean not that they, all vice presidents were waited, ready to take the office, yeah. but you can't make the case that you're inexperienced. Yeah. The well, kid's a kid. Yeah, I, th I think that... Actually, the viciousness was fairly late in starting uh, among the Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just really got going. But we were just commenting on the Daily Show last night. Um, there are all these things about the candidates imploding and g losing control. And they pa played the actual clips. <coughs> Not so. I mean, no. they're just sort of very, you know, Clinton saying, I, I guess I don't understand what you're saying, or Romney saying, well, you're entitled to your opinion. This is you know, volcanoes erupting and, and all yeah. sorts of funny things. Yeah. So we really do have a media creating, as far as I'm concerned, a whole separate reality. Good. Whereas here on the Donahue show, it's like real. Yeah, we We're, don't raise our voice. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we Never. just, it's, it's real. Wait till I get angry. <laughs> Well, what was the Goldwater line? The <laughs> defense of liberty? The extremism? <laughs> is, is, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm with Cal. Well, it'll be interesting, but remember, vote on February 19th. Right mm -hmm. now, you can register at the polls, and there's really no excuse. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to vote. I, uh, <laughs> I'm into it. I'm sorry. Oh, I think it's, it's great. I always so, like presidential primaries. They're fun. And, you know, we just have a couple minutes left, but let's talk um, on April, April 1st. The election after that will be um, when we elect our Supreme Court justice. That race has not yet heated up, but it's certainly very, very There's early. There's an appellate court race. Um, and uh, the appellate court uh, here in District 2, um, uh, the uh, judge who was appointed, Judge uh, Lisa Neubauer, mm -hmm. is running against um, Bill. I know. Gleisner. Gleisner, yep. Uh, and Two good people, from what I understand, mm -hmm. and uh, so that'll be interesting. But also, the um, overwhelmingly uh, a vote has been taken to send the Frankenstein veto to referendum, mm -hmm. and whether that should be outlawed. We used to talk about the Vanna White veto. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about the Frankenstein veto. Cal and I, as old Democrats, want to say it was Tommy Thompson who perfected, who perfected the Vanna White veto. <laughs> and uh, e. go home. <laughs> Well, I just love it when, when, when current legislators are so appalled at what Governor Doyle is doing. No. I just want to say, just a little historical perspective. Sure. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. We only have a minute left to, to get rid of the Frankenstein veto. Good. Well, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's long overdue. Um, it, it, it started, the veto, line item veto really started to be perfected to some ex limited degree under Pat Lucy, and then it really blossomed under Tommy Chomson's, uh, what, 14, 15 years in, in office. And Governor Doyle has limited, compared to Tommy Thompson, uh, authority because of the Van of White, which meant he can't strike individual letters, but he can strike words and create new sentences and paragraphs and the whole gamut. Uh, the, the gubernatorial veto power in the state is much too broad, and it ought to be reined in. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, line item vetoes, but it ought, to be, it ought to be hemmed in to something that's uh, less than creative in nature. Wonderful. We're at the end of our time, but we just want to remind you, when is the primary? February 19th. Thank you. And the general election? April 1st. April 1st. <laughs> April Fool's Day. Yeah. April yeah. Fool's oh, Day. Really? Well, thanks for joining us, and uh, we hope you have a pleasant February, particularly as you wait in line to vote.